Today's video will be about DHT-22 and how you can interface with it. It is a rather cheap sensor to measure temperature and humidity. If you have bought an Arduino kit, chances are you already own a DHT-11. Compared to it, DHT-22 offer better accuracy and a wider range, making it more suitable for hobbyist projects. There are two versions of it. There is a breakout board version, which includes a pull-up resistor. I don't have that version, so I'm using my DHT-11 for demonstration. It has three pins, VCC, to provide a power source, varied from 3.3 to 6 volts, data to transmit sensor data, and ground. However, if you have a standard one like mine, then the third pin is null and doesn't need to be connected. You also need a 10 kilom pull-up resistor. Then you can just wire it like this with the resistor lying between the power line and data line. To use it with your project, you can use many libraries for that. Here I'm using the Adafruit DHT library, which also requires Adafruit Unified Sensor Library. If you don't use Platform I.O. and cannot access this example code, then you can find it in the GitHub link under the description. But this video will also include a guide on how to interface with the sensor yourself using Arduino without the need to use an external library. This can be a great way to learn how basic communication between electronic devices works. Its communication protocol is a single wire interface, but please note that it is not the common Dallas One wire. Anyways, you need to read its data sheet to understand how to work with it. The data that will be transmitted to our MCU is a series of five bytes. The first two bytes are for the relative humidity, the second two are for temperature, and the final one is the checksum value to test if our data is correct. The first step is to provide the start signal to the sensor. We set the voltage level to low for at least one millisecond, then write a high and wait for 20 to 40 microseconds. To wait for it, remember to use the delay microseconds function since the normal delay use milliseconds. The second step is to wait for a response. So we change our pin to input. We wait for low for 80 microseconds, then high for 80 microseconds again. In order to determine how long it has waited, we set a timer, run a while loop that does nothing as long as the voltage level remains the same. Then once it ends, we take the current time minus the previous timer. As you can see here, I'm setting such that if the time waited is longer than 85 microseconds, the function will quit since a timeout error might have occurred. The last step is for us to read data transmitted by the DHT-22. It will send a burst of 40 bits or 8 bytes consecutively. Both of the bits have a low voltage of 50 microseconds followed by a high voltage level. The duration of this high voltage level tells us if that is bit 1 or bit 0. Bit 0 takes from 26 to 28 microseconds, whereas bit 1, 1 should take 70 microseconds. So if our high voltage duration is greater than 30 seconds, then that's automatically a bit one and zero otherwise. To add a bit zero, we use left shift our byte by one. The final bit of the byte is now zero. To add a bit one, we still left shift, but we will use the or bitwise operation with the number one to change the final bit to one. Please review bitwise operation and see if you find this part confusing. Once we are done, we have our relative humidity and temperature by combining each two bytes. Now we still have to test if the data we received is correct. We do so by taking the sum of the four previous bytes and use bitwise and with 255. This gives us the last eight bits of the sum and it should equal to, you guess it, 
checksum. If it is valid, then we're good to go. Our program is basically finished here, but note that in your loop function, you should wait for more than one second before using to prevent unstable status from the sensor. This is only a guide on understanding how you can communicate with DHT22, but you can apply this to perform more stuff such as building a library with a class interface for this sensor or sensors which are similar to this in terms of data communication. Thanks for watching and I hope this video is of help.